So we left off talking about what kind of strategy we want to use when we uh, are dealing with strings. Do we use a while loop, do we use a for loop, or do we want to use a for each loop? And then pretty much what I said is that if you have a very structured way in which you want to approach it, if you know you have to start at the beginning of the string and then go through each index to the very end of the string, then you want to use a for each loop. Anything that is a little bit more randomized or a little bit inconsistent, so you have to choose only some indices, or if you have to start at the very end of the string, then you might want to use a, a while loop or a for loop instead, because that gives you that kind of flexibility. So for the next few examples that we're going to go over, we're gonna talk about what can you use? Do you wanna use a while loop, a for loop, or a for each loop? And we're also going to, if we can, use several strategies, several structures in order to achieve the end goal for every single uh, prompt that we present. So this is very similar to the programming assignment that I gave to you guys. Um, in that programming assignment, you had to check if something it was a palindrome or not. A palindrome is a string or I guess text that is the same forwards and also backwards. And some common ones that I gave to you as examples were mom, because if you spell mom backwards, it's still mom. Level was another one, because if you spell level backwards, it's still level. And then we also have what, like dad was another one. These are all palindromes. But this one um, is a little bit simpler than the programming assignment. You just want to reverse it. You don't need to compare. You just want to reverse. In the examples that we gave to you, we gave to you uh, in terms of solutions, there were there was a for loop example and there was a while loop example. This one could also be done with a for each loop. Um, so we're going to go over uh, different strategies with this, but first of all, let's answer the questions. So the first question, if we have a string, so let's say we, we our string is called, or let's say it is hello with a smiley face. We just want to reverse it. So we want to think about where do you want to start in the string? How, like, if you want to reverse it, where is the best place to start? And there's more, there's, several answers for this. So let's see, what, what do you guys think? Where should we start if you want to reverse a string? The end of the string, right? That makes sense, right? If, if we were to reverse this, it should be this parentheses, <laughs> then the colon, and then a space, exclamation mark, O, L L E H. This is what we want when we reverse it. So ideally you want to start here and then work your way this way. So where do you want to start in the string? The very end. So the last index of the string. And where do we want to stop? Where do we want to end at the string? If we're moving backwards, then you should ideally end up at the very beginning of the string. So that would be index zero. When we say last index, oops, I thought that was going to be a highlighter, but when we say last index, what, how do we get the last index without actually physically counting, without you yourself physically counting and putting in a number there, how do we get the last index? We talked about this two weeks ago because of Thanksgiving, but do you, does anyone remember how we actually get the last index? Yes, that is one way. How, what else can we do? Um, close length of the string would give you the length but minus one, very good. The length of the string minus one. So that would give you the actual index number for the very last string. Um, you could use negative one as a bracket, but then just for practice sake, I don't wanna use that for now. I'm just once, uh, uh, well, we're gonna use this as 
or we're gonna use this for the very last index just for clarity also. So what kind of loop should we use? We're not starting at the beginning. In fact, we're starting at the very end and we're gonna work our way backwards to the very beginning. So what kind of loop? A for loop, while loop, or for each loop? There's more than one answer for this. <laughs> you have a, okay. So uh, a for loop or a while loop in terms of what we've laid out. There is a way that you could do this with a for each loop, but um, in terms of the constraints that I've laid, a for loop or a while loop would be best. But like I said before, there is a way to do this with the for each loop. Don't think that you're being confined to these two loops. Um, for uh, this, I think I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to do an example using the for loop. And then um, for the next time we do it, I'll use a while loop. And, or for the next example that would require a for loop or a while loop, I'll do a while loop. And then what should we be doing in our loop? So this line right here, I'm gonna be answering as I go through the example, but to give you a basic idea of the things that are mean, and also a review of what we covered before today, we talked about a couple of things. And one of the major things we discussed was not only accessing cer certain things with brackets, you end the index. So like, for example, like string, like zero, like we would, that's how you access characters. Another thing we talked about was being able to use string arithmetic, adding or concatenating strings to make a longer string. So combining two strings to make a bigger one. So we also are going to incorporate that concatenation in here. Once um, so a lot of you guys uh, who asked, reached out and asked questions about the programming assignment, you guys were having difficulty starting it. But then once you guys got started, it was like, I found that almost no one had questions about it. So, which is a good thing. That means you guys understood the string concatenation part. Let's go ahead and do this question so that we could figure out uh, how we could, I guess, uh, or what different strategies we can do in order to solve this question. Does everyone see my notebook? Yes, okay, perfect. So remember one of, the, oops, what we're, what we're doing here is make, make a new string by reversing the old string. And uh, what else, I guess I'll do it here. So, we talked about how we want to start at the end of the string, and we want to end at the beginning of the string. Beginning of the string. When we say end of the string, this means that we are at the last index, and the last index is the length of the string minus one. And then for this one, the beginning of the string is the first index, which is simply zero. Remember, I just want to emphasize this again. In like every single coding language, the first index is zero. But for some reason, the very lot or for like AP computer science principles, the first index is one. So um, from a programming perspective, just keep that in mind. And then later on, just try to switch your mentality about that. So what kind of for uh, or what kind of loop did we want to use? We've decided we're going to use a for loop and um, the actions. We're going to fill this is in as we go along. Um, so the string that I'm using is going to be hello with exclamation mark and a smiley face. 
So we want to maintain flexibility. If I go in and change my string into something else, I don't, I should have uh, a well structured code or a program that requires me to change nothing else. So my input can change, but my program should be able to handle it, which is all part of good coding practice. So um, that's why we have this, the length of the string. Instead of hard coding a number for the last index, we leave it flexible enough so that we can change or so that we can determine the last index despite the string changing. So we're gonna do a for loop where we start at the end and work our way to the beginning. How would we write this for loop? So maybe it would help, actually. The four, and then we'll call the variable like i for index in range what? Where do we start? Like, you normally have a start, end, and then the step size. So we already should know what our starting position is. Where do we want to start in terms of our for loop? Yes, very good. We want to start at the very end of the string. So um, hold on a second. Let me see if I can annotate and maybe that will make things a little bit clearer. So my string is currently H E L L O with here's like let's say we call that a space and then um, with an exclamation mark. And then this, and this. So this is the zeroth index. Then we have our first index and second index and third. Oh, this is gross actually. Maybe I should have just written it out. This is, this is index number zero, then one, two, three, four, five six, seven, and then eight. We wanna start here and then work our way backwards so that we can get every single character in, in the string. So our very, the actual number of characters that we have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We actually have a total of nine, nine characters. So if we subtract one from it, that should give us our very last index, which is the reason why for this start, we get the length of the string minus one to get the very last index of our string. Then after that, we want to work our way to the very or to our ending position. And our ending position was index zero. But do we actually want to put zero as our ending position when we have a, a range for our for loop?
what should the ending position or what should our end argument right here be when we write out our for loop? Um, close. So remember also that the end is not inclusive. So we don't want to actually put zero. We want to go a little further than that. Right, negative one. That's exactly it. Um, if we put it up to zero, then we would go only up to index number one, which would exclude index zero. So we want to go a little further than that. So up to not including negative one, which will allow us to stop precisely at zero. And our step size, hopefully you guys have figured out, is going to be negative one because you decrement every single time. You start from this index number eight over here, and then you go, one less, one less, one less, one less. So this is how our for loop will look. This is where things might get a little bit tricky. This is where a lot of you guys who had questions about the programming assignment were kind of confused about. Um, where do you start? How do you create a new string? So to create a new string, it's pretty straightforward. You can just create a new string new string and set it to empty quotation marks. This will give you an empty new string, like a string that has nothing inside of it. It's Python will know it's a string, but Python will also know that there's no characters in that string yet. Then we're going to use the knowledge that we know about string concatenation. When you add one string to another string, you create a longer string with those two strings combined. So we start over here at index number eight, add it onto your string. Then you add the next thing onto that string, then the next thing, then the next thing, then the next thing. So for this, your new string is going to be equal to your new string, which is your current new string plus the addition of a specific character. So that character would be how do we or how do we access a specific character? What um, symbol do we use? How do we access a specific character in a string? Perfect, we are going to use the brackets. So we get access a character from the old string using the brackets and what index are we looking at? What is constantly going, which, which variable tells us exactly which index to look at to get a, a certain character? I is a thing that is consistently changing that will allow us to get, uh, or that allows us to see a specific index. So by the end of it, if we print out our new string, we can see that it is completely reversed. If I change the string so that instead of hello, it's going to be goodbye, you can see that this is reversed as well. So despite the fact that I've used a different string, I've created a program with enough flexibility that will work that, so that this will work consistently. The key to this was this right here, having a string with nothing in it, an empty string. 
That way I could develop a new string in here. I'm gonna do a walkthrough of this. That way you guys can see exactly what's going on. I see some confused faces. So we'll go ahead and give this a try. All right, does everyone see this right here? It is, you guys should see a, hopefully a screenshot of the code that we just wrote out. Perfect. All right, so we're going to make a new string, but or we're gonna just run through this. Um, first off, we're gonna start with writing out the string. This string is goodbye, so G-O-O-D-B-Y-E. And for some reason, I decided to use four exclamation marks. In terms of the index numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, so our new string at the moment has nothing inside of it. There's nothing. So all I've run through so far are these two lines of code, the string, which is goodbye, and the new string, which is nothing. The next line of code would be the for loop, for i in range, and then the length of the string minus one. So the length of the string, if we count the actual number of values inside of, or of characters inside the string, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. We have 11 characters in the string. When we do 11 minus one, we get 10, which prompts us or which gives us the last index. So the range is from 10 to negative one, decrementing by one each time. That means I start from 10, nine, because I'm decrementing, decrementing eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. This is to negative one, which is not inclusive. So I don't actually go to negative one, I stop here. So these are all of my I values. I start from the 10. So I'm gonna go in here. New string is equal to new string plus string I. So if I look at, so I is currently equal to 10. If I run this line, so new str is equal to new str plus string i. String i, which is where i is 10 actually, so maybe I should just put 10, is this character. It's the exclamation mark. So I'm going to add exclamation mark new string at this very moment is just empty quotation marks. So kind of like adding zero. So zero plus something like zero plus three is three. Zero plus negative one is negative one. Zero plus anything is that number. You could kind of think about that analogy to this. When you add an empty string plus a string, you will get that string. So nothing plus an exclamation mark will mean that your new string now is the exclamation mark. So you finished 10. Now you are moving on to 9, where i is 9, which is the next value in our range. So i is equal to 9. We're still, we're going to go into this line of code which is the new string, new str is equal to still new str plus string i. i is nine, so I'm actually just gonna replace this with nine. And if we consider what string nine is, string nine is, if you take a close look over here, another exclamation mark. 
So instead of having string i, we could just think of this as an exclamation mark. New string at this very moment is currently equal to an exclamation mark. So we had um, new string, it was empty quotation marks, but it, now it's been replaced. It's been updated by uh, add after the addition that we did. So now we have exclamation mark plus exclamation mark. So what is new string now equal to? What is it now equal to after doing the concatenation? Perfect, it's now equal to two exclamation marks. Then after that, we are going to be doing the next value in the range, which is i is equal to eight. So where i is equal to eight, we have new str is equal to new str plus string i, but i at this point is eight. So we are looking at i or string eight. If we take a look at string eight, so that is an exclamation mark. So I have an exclamation mark here. New string is currently equal to two exclamation marks. So I have exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So when I concatenate these, what is my new string now equal to? Right, we have three exclamation marks. Uh, so let's do this a couple more times. Actually, uh, yeah, let's just do this a couple more. Let's skip ahead, I changed my mind. <laughs> so um, let's pretend we already did i is equal to seven. Now we're at i is equal to six. So after i is equal to seven, our new string is equal to four exclamation marks. So now I have, a, I have i is equal to six and still using that same line of code, new str is equal to new str plus string i, but i is equal to Six. What is string six? What is string six? E. Yes, very good. So E, I'm just going to say that this is E. And currently new string is four exclamation marks. So what would new string be equal to? With this concatenation. Very good. One, two, three, four exclamation marks with an E following after it. The E does not go before the exclamation mark that comes after because it concatenates in order exclamation marks first, then the E after. So it, exclamation marks first, then the E after. I'm gonna go ahead and skip, oops. We're gonna go ahead and skip ahead and pretend we now we are at I is equal to uh, zero. So when I is equal to zero, like let's assume that we are at new str is equal to at this point is equal to exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, E, Y, B, D, O, O. This is what it looks like so far. When I is equal to zero and we run the same line of code, which I'm just gonna copy and paste because time, this is not nine, but this should be zero. What is string zero? Very good, string zero is this G. So this is G, 
And then I have a new string right here. New string, remember, is this. So when I concatenate these two strings, what would my new string be? Hopefully you guys are just thinking, just put one after the other, concatenate these, like stick them together. So it will be our full reversed string that looks like this. And then once we reach the very end of our range, we are done and we just print that new string. And that's the reason why we got something that looks like this. Does anyone have any questions? And we're gonna move on to our next uh, practice question, which is called verbing. So you're gonna ask the user for a verb. So getting user input, um, I don't know if you guys remember user input, but um, for this, you're gonna ask for user input, if the length is at least three, so then, oh, well, sorry grammar error, then you should add ing to the end. So if the length is at least three, then add ing to the very end. However, if it already ends in ing, then you should add ly to the end. If the string is less than three, then you should leave it unchanged. So I give you some examples here. You can see if I have punch, it becomes punching swimming becomes swimming lee and then go because it's less than three like the length is less than three then you just leave it alone so this is our next question so strategy wise what is the first thing that we should do when approaching this question what should we be checking for Yes, we should check the length. Because we know if the length is uh, greater than three or greater than or equal to three, then you want to um, add ing to the end or attempt to actually, let me actually, Let's actually backtrack on this. I erased much more than I should have. So if the length is less than three, then that means that you leave it alone. Otherwise, what should we be doing? or if the, the length is over, greater than or equal to three, what should we do to it? Okay. We could try to add ing, but there's another condition. Very good. We have to check if it ends in ing first. Because if they are ing, if it is i, oh, what is going on here? If it is ing, 
versus not ing, we have to do two different things. If it is ing, what do we want to do? The last three letters are ing. Perfect. You want to add ly. And if the last three letters are not ing, what do we want to do to it? Add ing. Very good. So um, this this one does this require a loop? Do we need a loop for this? Yes, you're right, we don't need a loop. So no loop is required for this. However, what is required is how to get substrings, how to slice out certain parts of a string to make a smaller string. That way you can do certain comparisons. So let's go ahead and try this right now. Um, everyone can see this, all right? Perfect. This is the verbing. So, we discussed that no loop is required for this. We also talked about the first thing that we should do is check the length of the string or actually get user input, get user input. And then after that, check length of the string. Then after that, we want to, um, or I guess, I guess it diverges from there. So, uh, we'll fill this in later as we go. So getting user input, we'll call it um, user, we'll just call it user, or actually we'll call it verb. We'll call it verb is equal to getting the input of whatever the, of a string. So give me any verb. That way this will like whatever the user types in, we get uh, we we take record of, we will store it into our variable called verb. We wanna check the length of the verb and we already know how to do that. Um, we, we just use length, but we wanna check the length of this particular string of the input, I guess, check the length of the input. And we talked about if the length of the input is less than three, then we want to leave it alone. We don't do anything to it. We leave it alone. We'll just print it out as that. However, if it's not less than three, so if it's at least three, then we have to do a little bit more with it. We decided that um, if less than three, leave it alone. Otherwise, we decided we have to check if last three characters are ing. By any chance, does anyone remember how to find the last three characters? Yes, if verb negative three, oops, yes, verb negative three to the very end of the string. So hold on a second. I think I'm gonna go back to that PowerPoint slide so you guys can know exactly what we're referring to here. Oh, let me look for the slide. So um, we talked about negative, negative 
indices as well, negative one, negative two, negative three, and negative four, for example. So when we printed this negative four colon, remember the colon, depending on what side the colon is on of the number, that means uh, from the beginning of the string or from the very end of the string. So in this case here, because it is after the number, so colon is after the negative four, we start from index number negative four and go to the very end of the string. Index negative four, uh, you just kind of start from zero, which is right here. Zero is right here. Then you go negative one, which is technically to the left of it, but you want to think of it as like almost like a circle, almost like a cycle, if you will. So if you go negative one, this really takes you to the very end of the string right here, which is the very last character. So negative one, negative two, negative three, that would give you the, uh, the third to last character. And then with the colon, it'll take, it'll get from the third to last character to the very end of the string. So which is the reason why when we write it out to get multiple characters, to get a substring of our string, we could use negative three colon. Very good. So we have, if the last three characters are equal to I and G, then um, if last three characters are I and G, then we wanted to, what did we want to do again? Add LY, I think. Yes, we want to add LY. Then we want to add ly to the very end. Otherwise, add ing. So if the last three characters are ing, then we want to add plus ing or plus ly to it. Um, if you guys want to shorthand it, which some of you guys might want to do, You could instead write it as verb plus equals ly, which means exactly the same thing as verb is equal to verb plus ly. And then we have our else verb plus equals ing. That means we, so if the last three characters are not ing, then you want to add ing in there. Um, if we want to leave it alone, we just, that means just print it out. So we could just print out the verb here. We could print out the verb here. Or we could print out the verb, whoops, I did not mean to run that. Or we could print out the verb. Now we can run it. So give me any verb. The one of the examples I gave was punch. So we can see now it says punching. Um, another example, oops, this one here. Another example was uh, swimming. I said swimming, now it's swimmingly. And then we could have go and it's just go because it's string is shorter. So I'm not gonna do like a huge full on walkthrough with this, but hopefully you guys can see what goes on when I use the example of punch. So um, when we check the length of punch, there's five characters in punch. So it'll skip this and then it'll go into the else statement to see if the last three characters are ing. The last three characters are not ing here. Um, so it'll go into the else statement, add the ing for us and then print that, that verb. I accidentally, what did I do? Hold on. There we go. So punch, and then it'll be punching. If I run this again with uh, swimming, the it's definitely greater than three. The length of swimming is greater than three. So it goes in here and checks if the last three characters are ing, which they are. So it'll add the ly and then print it, which is, I don't know why I keep doing that. 
which is why we get swimmingly. And then finally, when we run this, but with the word go, go is less than three. So we'll just print out the verb and then we'll just have go. Um, there's more than one way to write out this code. To be honest, this is probably not how I would write it. Um, I just wrote it in the structure of this, but for those of you who guys are like, oh, like, did you really need it if else? You don't, but, um, but yeah, as long as your works, it should be fine. <laughs> Any questions so far? All right. Counting the number of vowels in their string is going to be the next. So what are your vowels? What is a vowel? What letters count as vowels? A E I O U, good. A E I O U. We're going to ignore Y. I know, like, sometimes Y, but then we're going to ignore Y. We're going to pretend that all Ys are consonants. So, um, there's a couple. So, all of the questions that we've done so far, so I, this is kind of like a challenge to you guys. All the questions that we've done so far, we just assumed were always lowercase. But if things are uppercase, things change a little bit. Like how, like how would you handle if there was uppercase? We saw before that when you have an uppercase character, it's different from a lowercase character because of the value that is presented in the ASCII table. So if I have an uppercase A versus a lowercase A, those two are not considered to be the same thing. So keep that in mind as we do this question. Um, when we want to count the vowels in a string, you want to pretty much keep a tally. So you're just going to go through every single character in the string and then see, is it a capital or is it a vowel or not? Is it an A? Is it an E? Is it an I? Or is it an O? Or is it a U? If it is, that means you have a vowel. So you have to increment your count of vowels by one. So more than one answer to this. Where do we want to start in the string if we want to go through all of the characters in the string? Uh, there is, but we'll talk about that again in a little second or in a second. So just assume right now everything is lowercase. It's just like food for thought. Good. Start at zero. We can start at zero. And then where do we want to end? Where do we want to go all the way up to? Very good. We want to go to the very end of the stream, which is going to be index um, the length of the string minus one. So what kind of loop should we use here? More than one answer. Should we use a for loop, a while loop, or for each loop? Okay, yeah. Well, actually, to be honest, you can use any of them. You could use a, you could use any of them. And what should we be doing in our loop? Remember the end goal is to count the vowels in a string. So what should we be doing in this loop? As we go through each character,
Very good. Check if that character is a vowel. And we know by definition a vowel is A, E, I, O, or U. So check if it, if it, uh, if character is A, E, I, O, or U. So let's go ahead and do this. We have five minutes. I believe that we can do this. So everyone can see this? Can you guys see me typing? Perfect. So we're gonna count the vowels in the stream. Um, we'll just, okay, we're not gonna ask for use it input this time. We'll just do string is equal to, we'll just do hello world. So in this case, there should be three vowels. The E, the O, and the O. There's two O's, so we have three total vowels. Um, for this case, or we know we have to start at the beginning. Actually, let me write this information up here. Start at beginning of string. If you wanted to start at the end of the string, that's perfectly fine as well, because you're going through every single string. There's no specific order that you have to go. You have to go through every character in the string regardless. There's no specific order in which you need to go, as long as you get every single character. So starting beginning of the string, starting at the end of the string, doesn't matter. Um, we are just going to start at the beginning of the string because that's just typically the logical thing to do. It's like start from the start from start to finish. So the end would be the end of the string. Um, when we consider the index, the indices, this would be index zero, and then this one right here would be um, index length of the string minus one. And the action that we want to do is check every character or check if character is A, E, I, O, or U. So we have to, we're gonna create a loop. Um, for this one, you can use a for loop, a while loop, or a for each loop, because we talked about for loop once. I just, and for loop is pretty similar to a while loop. And because we're running out of time, we're gonna do a for each loop, for each loop. So remember, when you use a for each loop, you want to be thinking of it as like speaking in English for each character in the string. So for each character in the string, check if that character is A, E, I, O, or U. So if the character is A, or if the character is E, or if the character is I, or if the character is O, or if the character is U, then we want to increment our tally, which we have not created yet, but we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So tally is the total number of vowels that we have. What should I initial initialize our tally to? Yes, very good. It's kind of funny because I could see some of you guys mouthing out like, <laughs> just like, I think that's what I get to. Um, tally is equal to zero. So if we see an A or an E or an I or an O or a U, then we want to increment our tally. Tally is plus equal to one, which is pretty much the same thing as tally is equal to tally plus one. And then we could print out the total number of vowels, which is like tally. So if I run this, I put an equal sign. Yes, thank you. We have vowels is equal to three, which, but let's say I change this into hello world with all capital letters. If I run this, I get vowels is equal to zero. That's because I have lowercase a, lowercase e, lowercase i, lowercase o, and lowercase u, which is not the same thing as uppercase e or uppercase o. So we have two options. Option number one, also include or char is equal to 
capital A, capital E, capital I, capital O, capital U, which is, um, I would say, pretty stren strenuous work because it's just a lot more that you have to include. Um, the other option someone mentioned before is just change everything to lowercase. Just change your original string into a lowercase string. So to do that, um, you can use string is equal to string dot lower. What this will do is change your string into all lowercase letters. And then it'll store it or like replace your old string with this new string. So when I run this, now it works. If you wanted to change everything to upper, it would be string dot upper. So the general way that you use this for the dot lower, you always use to make everything lowercase. It would be a uh, string name dot lower as the function. So now you don't have to do capital A, capital E, capital I, capital O, capital U. It does it all for you. Even if you have like a weird mix of things. So instead, let's say instead of this, I have a, oops. AP comp psi prince principle. So I have like a capital A here still, and some of these are in like most of these are lowercase. So one, two, three, four, five, six vowels, unless I counted wrong. We have six vowels, which is perfectly correct. 